either. Wake up, genius. The big day has gone. What time is it? Eight o'clock. How come it's so dark? You've got your eyes closed, silly. Oh. walking home. Hey, has my telegram come yet? What telegram? From Joan. She promised she'd let me know if she could come today. Come in. Oh, it's you. Well, who did you expect, Frank Sinatra? Bring it in, Susie. Thank you for the loan of your recording machine, Molly. Uh, put it over there. The things I do for 50 cents a week. I recorded my graduation speech last night. Would you like to hear it? Do we have a choice? Come in. Have you kids seen the programs for the show? They just came. Oh, I hope my name's in it this year. I want to start a scrapbook. What's the idea? The show doesn't go on for hours. Listen, if I ever get down off these toes, I'll never get back up again. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> girl. Ladies and gentlemen, parents, friends. What friends? Music is the language of the spheres. Good music never becomes extinct, 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 extinct. <laughs> yes? Good morning, young lady. Rehearsing so early? <laughs> Jerry, were you expecting a telegram? Yes, from my sister. There it is. Oh, thank you. There's the first bell. You'd better hurry if you want breakfast. You'll, you two will never be All ready. Right, Come on, Nadine. Come on, Jen. Well, what are you waiting for? But maybe she can't come. Well, you'll never know if you don't open it. Come on. Well? Molly, she's coming! She's coming! <laughs> I have arranged for Anastasia to take my place today. We'll arrive one o'clock playing for us of Love Show. Oh, Molly! <laughs> There's the bell. Come on. Oh, golly. I bet nobody ever had a sister like mine. I wonder if she'll recognize me. Her own sister? How long since she saw you? Last summer. But I was only 14 then. Just a kid. Oh, you mean way back in BG. You know, before Girdle. <laughs> oh, Molly. You should have made me put up my hair last night. She was so fussy about that. Look at her. Just look not a hair out of place. I wonder how she does it. She squirts stickum on it. The last time I tried that, I couldn't get my hat off. This must be a very exciting day for you, Sherry. Oh, you can say that again. I mean, 
Yes, Professor Braymore. I'm looking forward to seeing your sister. Of all my pupils, you're the only one whose family I have never met. Oh, well, Joe's so busy all the time. No sooner does she close in one show than she opens in another. Oh, I see. What about you, my dear? Will your charming mother be here today? No, sir. She's in Niagara Falls on her honeymoon. Honeymoon? Again? Yes, sir. It gets kind of discouraging. Just about the time I get one stepfather broken in, I get a new one. Here it comes. Mr. Arthur Hale. Now, don't tell me I'm mistaken. We sat next to each other last year at the school play. I had my little piece of news with me. My daughter Nadine was the leading lady. Oh, yes, yes, of course. She bit you, remember? Your daughter bit me? Oh, no, my peak. My daughter was so embarrassed. Well, it was really all my fault. I was scratching her leg. Oh, my daughter. No, 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 the peaks. Oh, Mr. Hale, you're so funny. You say the most amusing thing. Depending on you for the show this afternoon. You're the star of this. I know. And that's why. That's why I wanted Joe to be here. Come on, Molly. Excuse me, where can I find a cab to take me to Fernridge School? Well, I'm afraid you can't, miss. You see, every cab in town's on the way over there now, full of visitors. Well, how soon will they be back? Well, I expect they'll stay until after the show. Oh, dear. You tell me I have to walk. How far is it? Straight down that road, that's about 20 miles, roughly. I'm afraid that's a little too rough for these heels. I uh, don't suppose you could take me, could you, Mr. Uh... Perkins. Peter Perkins. <laughs> Listen, Pete. Would $10 put you in a higher income bracket? Well, <clears throat> I could always list it as a gift. <laughs> the things you men think of. Yeah. <clears throat> wow. You know, Arthur, I deeply appreciate your interest in the school. I always enjoy coming up here, Professor. You never let the kids look like amateurs in your performances. How do they feel about doing a Morton Gould operetta? The whole school's very excited. I think you'll enjoy it. And you'll hear a real voice, a girl named Cheryl Williams. Good. I'm reviving a Strauss musical. So far, I haven't been able to find a leading lady who can sing those romantic old waltzes. Can I meet Miss Williams? Yes, but... Uh, What's the catch? Sherry is just 15. 15? Well, she'll get older. But I have to have someone this year. I can't wait for my star to age. Well, I understand she's got an older sister who is quite a musical comedy favorite. Oh, what's her name? Uh, Josephine, I think. Uh, Josephine Williams. Never heard of her. Let's go backstage. I'll introduce you to Sherry. What's the use? I'm not interested in infants. Well, you might learn more about her sister. What do you say her name is? Josephine Williams. All right, so your sister's a star. Yes. All I want to know is what she starred in. Well, she's playing in New York now. What's the name of the play? Well, it's... Oh, I don't know. She doesn't know. What's the name of anything she's ever been in? Well, there was... Oh, you've got me so mad I can't think. Did you ever see her in a play? Well, how could I? In winter, I'm in school, and in summer, well... Well, she never works in summer. You know what I think, don't you? Who cares what you think? Lay off, will you? What's the idea of getting her all stirred up just before the show? Because I'm sick and tired of hearing about...
about her mythical sister. You mean, you think I'm lying? Why don't you grow up? Personally, I think your sister's been giving you a song and dance, and I don't mean on any stage. Here. Nadine, look out! Why, Mr. Hale. Oh, I met you last year when you came for the show. My mother's peak did you, remember? Yes, I was scratching her leg, uh, the peaks. Well, it's awfully nice to see you. Won't you come in? Well, thanks very much. Uh, Professor Braymore was going to introduce me to Miss Williams, but he seems to be lost in the shuffle somewhere. Oh, I'll be glad to introduce you. Girls, this is Mr. Arthur Hale, the famous Broadway producer. How do you do, ladies? How do you do? And this is our little Sherry Williams. What is the star of the show in tears and just before the curtain's going up? Well, we'll have to fix that. It's all her fault. That's not so. It is so, so. Just a minute, ladies, please. I'm glad you're here, Mr. Hale. You know everybody on Broadway, all the stars. Well, I know a great many of them. Have you ever heard of Sherry's sister, Josephine Williams? She is a star, isn't she? Yes. I was talking about her just a few minutes ago. Mr. Hale, tell her the names of some of the shows that Joe's been in. Well, uh, let me think. There were so many of them. Uh, uh, did any of you girls see a play called Dancing Shoes? No, no, no I didn't. She was in that. A terrific hit. Oh, yes, indeed. It ran several seasons. And your sister, a really great performance. I'll never forget her in that first act. She was so beautiful with that gorgeous black hair. And the... You mean blonde hair? Uh, yes, of course, blonde hair. But in the first act, she wore a black wig. Overture, overture. Overture. Already, girls, everybody. Charlie, aren't you dressed, dress? No, ma'am. Be late. I'll help you. Mr. Hale, if you please. Oh, certainly, I'm sorry. Sherry. Uh... Uh, thank you. <laughs> well, lots of luck, Sherry. I'll see you later. any faster. I can, but the horse can't.
and it brings a pebble of a rock. Once upon a fall, cows played clarinet, and the dipper was the how much you've improved. Do you really think so? Oh, sweet. Oh, anyway, I was kind of giving my all with you and him both out there. Him? A boyfriend? Oh, no, someone much more important. Mr. Arthur Hale, the big producer. We had quite a long talk just before the show. What did you talk about? About you. He thinks you're wonderful. He does? He raved. He said he never would forget you in the first act of dancing shoes with that black wig. What else did Mr. Hale tell you about me? Oh, let me think. May I come in? Mr. Hale! Why, certainly. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Here she is. How are you, Miss Williams? Mr. Hale, you did like the show. Very much, especially you. Honest? Cross my heart. You must be very proud of her. I am. Girls, where are you? They're waiting to take pictures of the whole thing. Excuse me, I'll be back in just a minute. My sister. Oh, hello. If you'll pardon my curiosity, Miss Williams. Now that we're alone, you can drop them, Miss Williams. You know who I am. I'm sorry, but I don't know what you're talking about. You mean you really don't know me? I'm not sure. I'm supposed to know every musical comedy star in New York, but you still have me confused. Oh, well, you're a very busy man, Mr. Hale. You couldn't possibly remember everyone. Still, I'm certain I've seen you somewhere. Perhaps... Could it have been in a performance of Dancing Shoes? <laughs> if we keep that up much longer, you'll have me believing it. Oh, don't tell me you lied to Sherry, Mr. Hale. I'm one of those weak characters who can't stand a weeping woman. Sherry wanted everyone to hear that you were a star, so I lied for her. Right away, everyone felt better, especially me. Well, I'm sorry if Sherry's vivid imagination caused you any discomfort. But I appreciate your gesture. Just a minute, please. But you are, obviously, of the theater. Perhaps. Then perhaps I could interest you in my show. Would you consider coming to my office tomorrow? It happens that I'm desperately in need of a leading lady. If your voice is anything like Sherry's... Oh, have you forgotten, Mr. Hale? I have a long-term contract with Dancing Shoes. But excuse me, I'll look for Sherry. Oh, gosh. 
Now, Chicken, you aren't going to be silly about this, are you? I don't like working all summer any more than you do. And why are you doing it? Well, you don't think I'd cancel our vacation unless I had to, do you? Well, why can't I go with you? Because you wouldn't enjoy it. Hot theaters, uncomfortable hotels, and stuffy old trains. Believe me, dear, you're much better off right here in school. If I could only see you in one show. Summer school doesn't start for two weeks. Can I visit with you until then? Honey, I told you, the show closes in New York tomorrow night, and then we go directly on the road. Now, be a good little trooper, will you? Life is so difficult at times. Yes, I know. Now, please write and don't run out of money. All right, Joe. But I feel like I'm wasting the best years of my life. <laughs> be a good baby. Bye-bye. Come on, darling. Dang. It's me for bed. If I'm going to catch that early train to New York tomorrow, I'm going to have to do some fast sleeping. How's about you, Dreamboat? I've got it! Oh, Molly, I've got it! Here we go again. No, this is a super duper idea. It came to me just like that. Well, forget it. Just like that. Every time you get one of those super dupers, Somebody winds up in the soup. Not this time. Listen. Pardon me. Are you Miss Molly Bradley? Yes, sir. Your mother asked me to meet you. Are you my new father? Uh, no, miss. I'm the new butler, Roberts. Oh. This is my roommate, Carrie Williams. She's here to meet her sister, but she doesn't know it. I'm going to surprise her. She's never seen her sister. No. On the stage. I see. Where is she playing? Well, it may sound silly, but I don't know. Um, how can I find out? Might I suggest that you telephone her place of residence? There's a phone right over there. Well, why didn't I think of that? I'll be right back. Gee, are you intelligent? It runs in the family, miss. Oh. Hello, Bradford Apartments. I'd like to talk with the clerk, please. The clerk? He just stepped out for a cup of coffee. I've been delegated to take over temporarily. Mm-hmm. Miss Josephine Reed? I don't know exactly where she's playing, but I know it's one of them fears on 42nd Street. Are you welcome? You mean, you never go to the theater? No, miss. I spend all my spare evenings at home, practicing on the piccolo. You too? Say, we must have a jam session sometime. Jam session? If I may... You're playing at one of the theaters on 42nd Street. Would you mind dropping me off there? Very good, miss. Right this way. Yes, sir. And star and none other, folks, than that hypnotizing, that tantalizing, scandalizing, red-headed bombshell, none other than the famous Bubbles Barton. Whoa, just a minute, sister. You're in a big city now. Yeah, the next time you come to full stop, you want to hold your hand out. Just until the Joe Poop has it. Get your tickets now, folks. The show closes tonight. Your last chance to see the little lady before she packs up her bubbles and goes on shore. Yes, sir, my friend, she packs up her bubbles in her old kit bag and takes her smiles on to some place else. Mother, would you not throw that gum on the sidewalk? I have to walk up and down there if you don't mind. Folks, you've never seen anything like this, Bubble Spartan. Oh, maybe in a dream, perhaps. Yes, sir, that's it, your dream girl comes to life. Esther, folks, girls, girls, and more girls. Two hours of fun and frolic. Feast to the eyes and ears, just exactly the way you folks like it. And star none other than that tantalizing, hypnotizing, scandalizing, red cocktail, the one and only bubbled pot. You now listen, that's getting to be a heaven with you, sister. You've got to quit it. I'd like a ticket, please. Sorry, no mine is allowed. But I have to find out something. Why don't you wait until you grow up, kid? No, you don't understand. I have to see Miss Bubbles Barton. I think she's my sister. You think? Don't you know? Oh, please, it's so important. Okay, kid, 
Shop closes tonight. I'll be out of a job tomorrow anyway. Hey, Steve, pass the kid in. Oh, thanks. Pardon for the, um, the young lady to see you. Yeah, I thought I told you I didn't want to see anyone tonight. I'm. Uh, Sherry, what are you doing in New York? Oh, what's the trouble here? If I can ever help you, please let me know. Oh, Mr. Hale! Would that be all, sir? Jeff, would you stay right here? Yes. Shall I change the record, sir? It seems a trifle gay. Come now, Sherry. Take it easy. It can't be as bad as all that. Oh, it's worse. It's just about the end of the world for me. Make you feel better to tell me what happened. Oh, I couldn't. I'm too ashamed. Ashamed about what? My sister. I learned the truth about her. I saw her. Hardly any clothes on her. All those men. <laughs> well, uh, how did it happen? You saw what you did. I saw her show. Why didn't you tell me she was in burlesque? Burlesque? You knew all the time she was Bubbles Barton. Your sister Bubbles Barton? Not really. You've seen her? Oh, yes, miss. You know, sir, she has the most beautiful pair of eyes you've ever seen. Bubbles Barton? Certainly. I thought she looked familiar. You mean... You go to burlesque? Well, yes, on and off. Uh, that is, I mean, sometimes. Well. Tell me, Sherry, did your sister see you at the theater tonight? No. Splendid. We'll get this all ironed out before you talk to her. Now, the first thing to do is to get comfortable. Oh, look at me. A mess. Excuse me. Have you had dinner? No, sir. Well, how about a sandwich? Or better yet, a... Salad and a lamb chop. It would only stick in my throat. 
pot of tea, miss, or a glass of milk. Milk? No, thanks. Well, there must be something. What do you do at school when the bottom drops out of everything? Well, at school, when Molly and I are face to face with a crisis, we usually have a heart sick special. Jeffers, a heart sick special, please. A what, sir? Can you imagine that? Jeffers doesn't know what a heart sick special is. You don't? I'm mortified to say, Miss, I don't. Well, there's really nothing to it. It's simple enough. You take two scoops of ice cream, chocolate and vanilla, put the chocolate on the bottom. Chocolate on the bottom? Yes. Then you add a slice of pineapple, some grated coconut, a few raisins, and smudge them all with marshmallow sauce. And then you fill up the glass with some hot caramel fudge and sprinkle them with grated nuts. Nuts? Jeffers, a hot, uh, hot sick special, please. Sounds terrific. Yes, sir. Terrific is the word, sir. Hey, Joe, how come we got to work this summer? We usually relax during the heated season. I know, Hannah, but they've never closed down all the burlesque houses in New York before. What if the rest of the country followed suit and started clamping down? Then where would we be? You're worried about something that ain't going to be. As long as men like to look at women, there's going to be burlesque. <laughs> I hope you're right. We're going to make all the hay we can while the sun's still shining. It's going to be a long, cold winter. Hello? May I speak to Miss Barton, please? This is urgent. For you, same urgent. You find out what he wants. She's busy right now. Any message? Who? What? Where? Says with? Watch your blood pressure, Hannah. What you say that man's name is again? Mr. Arthur Hale. Is he on the phone? Uh-uh. Yes, sir. What about Mr. Hale? Yes, sir. I got the address. Hannah, for heaven's sake. Miss Joe, hold on to something. Miss Sherry's in town. Sherry? She's with Mr. Arthur Hale right now. Well, what in the world is she doing with him? Well, he can't be good because he wants to know if you'll come and get her. Will I? Hannah, get your coat. You're going with me. Yes, sir. Arthur Hale. Miss Joe, ain't that the producer? I don't care who he is. I wish he'd stop messing around in my affairs. Where is she? Shh, please. What's the matter? Will you please stop yelling? Is she all right? Yes, she's just sound asleep. Wake her. Why not? There are a couple of things you should know first. Such as? She went to the theater tonight. She saw your performance. I'm Jeffers, Mr. Hale's gentleman. Well, I'm Hannah, Miss Williams' lady. How do you do? How do you do? What have you got there? A terrific concoction, aptly called a heart sick special. I thought Miss Sherry might like another one if she survives the first two. Is she done eat two of them already? Yes. Well, what's in them? Two scoops of ice cream, one of vanilla, one of chocolate. You put chocolate at the bottom and then you... Why? Why? Oh. That's a very disturbing question. It's too bad she had to learn the truth the hard way. Still, it's a great relief. No more ducking and dodging people who might tell her. I was frightened to death that Fernridge, you might recognize me and embarrass her. I've dreaded the day when she'd learned her mistake. Her mistake? Yes, you see, I never told her I was a star, musical comedy. That was her idea. I only told her I was working in a show, and she went on from there. You don't know her imagination. And you didn't have the heart to disillusion her. You can't explain burlesque to anyone who's not actually in it. It's everything people say it is. Noisy, obvious, down to earth. So are a lot of people. 
And they come to our shows to be entertained. Wait a minute. You know, a lot of people find my shows slightly diverting, too. Of course. But your shows are very smart and artistic. Bubbles Barton might be an awful flop in a Hale production. And that's a chance I couldn't take. That's what I couldn't tell you yesterday. You see, in burlesque, I'm a star, making a lot of money. As long as that money can go on giving Sherry the advantages of good schools and fine teachers to train her voice, then I'm staying in burlesque. You don't have to explain that to Sherry. That's just about what I told her. You did? Yes. But how did you know? I didn't. I guess I just wished it. You've been very kind and most understanding. I'm sorry the Williams family's caused you such disturbance. I promise it won't happen again. You know, I once produced a play something like this. At the end of the first act, the misunderstanding between the boy and the girl was all straightened out, and the boy suggested they celebrate with a little drink. I'll take bourbon. What about you? I'll take sherry. Home. Uh, do you mind if I call you in the morning? Why? I'd like to find out how Sherry took my explanation. I don't understand. What did she say when you told her? Nothing. Nothing? When I finished arguing your case, I found the judge was sound asleep. Sherry, is that you? This is me. Yeah. Oh, I'm eating a gooey chewy. Kevin! <laughs> Boy, am I silly. Well, listen, tell me all about your sister. How was the show? What did she wear? Oh, oh, I can't tell you. Not over the phone. But it's changed my entire life. I've always heard that suffering mellows a character. And now I know it's true. Molly, I'm facing the most critical crisis. Sherry, for gosh sakes, you're not sick, are you? Oh, you don't understand. This is a mental upheaval. I've got to rescue my sister. Yes, Joe. I've only got one sister, and she needs a lot of rescuing. What? I said, I'll be right over. Don't do anything desperate till I get there. Bye. Good morning, darling. Hello, Joe. Sleep well? Yes, thank you. Wait till you see the cute things I have for you. A little play suit and the trickiest little sweater. Really? Something the matter? Why, of course not. Oh, come on, Sherry. Anytime you're not interested in new clothes. Yes? Here? Oh, yes. All right. Why must I go back to Fernridge? Can't I stay here a few more days? I'm sorry, darling. It's out of the question. But I can't leave now. I mean, I can't leave today. Why not? Well, I... Oh, excuse me.
Good morning, Mr. Hale. Good morning. I just dropped by to return your umbrella. Oh, thank you. Won't you come in? Thank you. You're looking very well this morning. Well, I'm feeling very underprivileged. Will you sit down? Thank you. Joe insists that I go back to school on that 5 o'clock train. Well, that's a very nice train. The dining car service is excellent. Well, it's not the train that's worrying me. You see, I have to leave for Jersey City in a few minutes. We open there today with a matinee. And Hannah's already left for the theater to take care of my baggage. Well, what's your problem? The problem is I can't miss that matinee, and Sherry must be put on the train. Am I a child that has to be led around by the hand? Definitely not. Uh, suppose we fix it this way. I'll call for you here at 3 o'clock this afternoon. And after a drive through the park, we'll have some tea and things at the nicest place you can think of. And I'll introduce you to the conductor of that nice 5 o'clock train. Did you two cook this up while I was asleep? Oh, Sherry. All right. I accept your invitation. And I'll be ready at 3 o'clock. And now I'm going to have my breakfast. That was very sweet of you, Mr. Hale. But please forgive my asking if your interest in Sherry has anything to do with your new show. She's really too young for a career, you know. Of course she is. It never entered my mind. It'll be fun to spend the afternoon with her, and it might help me forget my own problems for a couple of hours. Now, don't you worry. I'll have Sherry on that train at 5 o'clock this afternoon. Thank you. Now, you're in a hurry. Oh, your umbrella. <laughs> I'll be back at 3 o'clock. Goodbye. Goodbye. Any ideas yet? No. But I can't go back to school and face everybody, as long as Joe's in burlesque. Gee, wouldn't it be wonderful if Arthur Hale fell in love with Joe and put her in his new show? Wait, I've got it. Well, what is it? I can sing that music. I'll get Mr. Hale to put me in his show. You? Sure. Then Joe can quit burlesque, and I can support the family until everybody forgets there ever was a Bubbles Barton. God. What a heroic thought. Yes, isn't it? Oh, but there's only one thing wrong. Mr. Hale might think I'm too young. Well, all you got to do then is make him think you're older. Well, how can I do that? Well, my mother always says, and she's proved it, that no man can ever guess a woman's age if she knows what to do with her hair, her clothes, and her figure. Well, there isn't much I can do to my figure before 3 o'clock today. Don't be silly. You know what I've seen my mother do? Arthur Hale calling for Miss Sherry Williams. Oh, uh, I have a message for you, Mr. Hale. Miss Williams went out and said she might be a little late. And would you mind waiting? Thank you. To yourself. Don't you like it? It's supposed to be very she-she. You have no idea how long it took me to get all glamoured up for our tea party. Tea party? Do you know what time it is? Tea time's gone, the train's gone, everything's gone, but you. Well, I don't think you're being very nice. I'm not trying to be nice. Do you remember I promised your sister to put you on that five o'clock train? Well, you can put me on the next train. What time's it leave? Oh, about midnight. Midnight? Well, you don't have to bark at me. Please. I'm a wreck as it is, after sitting here for hours, picturing you being kidnapped or run over by a truck. You did, really? Certainly. Well, I'm terribly sorry. I had no idea you felt that way. What am I going to do with you until midnight? You mean, because you're going to be busy all yes, evening? Yes, I'm helping to sponsor a big benefit tonight. I know. I read it in the papers. Well? Well, I don't want to seem pushy, but I am all dressed up with no place to go. You wouldn't mind spending the evening with me. 
I'd love to. Come on. Jeffers will fix you some tea while I change. Where are we going? To my apartment. Woo-hoo! Please, Miss Williams. I can get Joe out of burlesque is to get a job myself. You mean by singing? Yes. Maybe I'm not good enough for a Broadway show. The point is, you're not old enough. Why? There's plenty of girls on Broadway that are only 18. Yes, but you're only 15. Oh, no. Yes. Well, what's the difference as long as I look 18? But you don't. That's only because you know. Why, but any stranger, especially a man, would think I was at least 18. What will you bet? Make it easy on yourself. Hello, Mr. Hale. Jimmy, your dad told me you were in the South Pacific. I was, but they gave me some shore leave. Oh, that's fine. I happened to see you from across the garden, and I thought I'd come over. <sighs> Sherry, this is Jimmy Burns. Miss Williams. Hiya, Sherry. Hello, Sailor. How's about dropping anchor for a minute? What do you mean, a minute? I've got 30 days to do nothing but talk to beautiful women. Hello, Mr. Hale. Hello there. Hello. Hello. Need any help, sailor? Always glad to help the Navy. Listen, Leathernex, this beachhead's taken. Go jingle your medal somewhere else. Medal? You mean you're a real hero? I hate to talk about it. You tell her about it, Sam. Well, it was like this, beautiful. There I was, alone in the jungle, surrounded by the enemy. All my ammunition gone. Nothing to fight with but my bare hands. Hey, it's me she's interested in. That's only your opinion, Sergeant. Hello, Crumple. Remember me, Guadalcanal? Which war? Oh, my mistake. Pardon me, lady. Haven't I seen you in pictures? No. I only sing on the stage. Oh, yeah. I could tell from way over there you were an actress. My name's Gallagher. And uh, me three guys named Joe. Hi. Hi. Hello, Joe. Uh, won't you sit down? Uh, say, Chum, how about some chairs? No, I'm sorry, Mr. Hale isn't at home. Oh, is that you, Miss Barton? I mean, Miss Williams? Yes, it is. I just called to thank Mr. Hale again and make sure that Cherry got away all right. She didn't leave. Went out dancing, Miss. She and Mr. Hale did what? Well, at least Miss Sherry was dressed for dining and dancing, a little beyond her years, perhaps, but to my mind, she looked delicious, if you'll pardon my saying so. And just where did that Prince Charming take her? Oh, I see. Thank you. Dirty double crosser. I even asked him this morning, cold turkey, if he wanted Cherry for his new show. Well, what did he say? He said she was too young. But he doesn't think she's too young to take out dancing. Miss Joe. Miss Joe. I hope she dressed up. I wonder how she wore. Oh, Hannah, that's beside the point. Don't you see he wants her for his new show, so he's dressed her up to look older to prove to her she can get away with it. Go tell Sam to put Francine on for the rest of the show. Yeah. Well, that's how it was told to me. <laughs> boys, a toast to Miss Sherry Williams. Miss Sherry Williams! Thank you, boys. Thank you, boys. Shut up, pal. Excuse me, Mr. Hale? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got one. Could you do without me for a minute? Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you my very dear friend, Morton Gould, who will play for you one of his own compositions, Through Your Eyes to Your Heart.
stop. Let's hear it. Come on, baby. Give. singing with you again. Again? When did you ever sing with me before? At Carnegie Hall. Carnegie Hall? Oh, but you wouldn't remember. It was only a dream. Oh. Come along. Where are we going? To meet Mr. Hopkins, my radio sponsor. Really? I think he might be interested in putting you on my program. 
honest and you mean he'd pay me? Certainly. Now, don't be too anxious. And remember, don't accept his first offer. Don't accept his first offer. Let's go. Mr. Hopkins, Mrs. Hopkins, Mr. and Mrs. Kellogg, Miss Sherry Wood. How do you do? Thank you. I suppose Morton has told you I'd like you on my radio show? Yes, sir. Good. Now, if we can agree on a suitable salary, what would you suggest? What's the matter? Well, that's not the way it's supposed to be. You're supposed to make me an offer so I can say no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see Morton's been talking to you. Well, I... Will you excuse me, please? <laughs> There's a silly trick. Give it to Red. <laughs> Hello. Joe. This looks like a lovely party. A little short of women. Mm -hmm. uh, gentlemen, this is Miss Williams, Sherry's sister. How are you? Hello. Hello. At ease. Miss Williams, you should have heard your sister sing tonight. She was terrific. Wasn't she, fellas? She sure was. How nice. Just where is my little sister? Your little sister, somewhere around here, receiving the personal applause of Morton Gould. Shall I get her for you? No, thank you. I'm sure she's perfectly safe with him. Won't you sit down? Oh, Here, sit down. No, thank you. I have to talk with Mr. Hale. Will you dance with me? Well, thanks, but uh, I warn you, I'm not as fresh as I was earlier in the evening. You still look very fresh to me. Would you hold it? Surely. Thank you. Has that dame got a figure? Or does every woman look that good to me since I got back? Sure, that's who she is. Bubbles Barton. Is that something? Bubbles Barton? The hottest thing in burlesque, that's all. Oh. Oh, yes. Well, let's have it. Have what? The questions you want to ask. No questions. I know all the answers. All but one. Is you referring to Sherry? No. No, not Sherry. It's you. I'm afraid I had you filed under the wrong letter. Of course, you know, I haven't the slightest idea what you're talking about. Maybe I can explain. Look. See that man down there? That's you. Tall, attractive, pleasant, prosperous. All that's right there on the surface. But that's all. A girl meeting you for the first few times couldn't possibly tell what's underneath. So? So she has to guess. Usually, it isn't very difficult for anyone who meets as many men as I do. Almost automatically, you classify them. They're either A-men, R-men, or L-men. What's an A-man? An angler. You know the type. Oh, and the R and L-men? Did you lose something? Well, whatever it was, it's gone now. Oh, that's too bad. I'm cutting in, Mr. Hale. OK? Yeah. Thanks. Mr. Hale, I just lost my girl, too. What do you do in a case like that? Well, Jimmy, if you're interested enough, go after her. If you're not, do what I'm doing. Forget it, go home and go to bed. Good night. Good night. I'm so excited I can hardly talk. You're old enough to sign a contract, aren't you, my dear? Well, not quite. Oh, well, in that case, you better bring someone along to sign for you, an older member of your family. Well, there's only one in my family. Hello, chicken. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Will you hear the most wonderful thing? Mr. Hopkins is going to put me on his radio program. Mr. Hopkins? Why, he's Lady Edith Dressing Cream. Mr. Hopkins, my sister, Joe. How do you do? How do you do? Oh, the one you said was on the stage. You say that again, mister. This is Bubbles Barton, Queen of Burlesque. Is this true? Yes. 
You mean you never heard of her? On the contrary, you have quite a colorful reputation. Mr. Hopkins says you will have to sign the contract. That won't be necessary now. You mean I don't get the job? I'm sorry, dear. May I ask what changed your mind? The obvious reason. I've spent 20 years building up a dignified reputation for Lady Edith Products. I can't have that name turned into a joke. A joke? Just because your new star has a sister in burlesque? Miss Barton, perhaps you don't know the slogan, cleansing cream. Removes everything in 30 seconds. I can't afford a tie-up like that between my product and burlesque. But you can't do this. It isn't fair. She'll quit burlesque. Well, that was the whole idea, my getting a job so she could quit. Don't chicken. I'll make her quit. I can support us both. The money you promised. Remember? I'm sorry. Please, baby. He promised. You promised. Everybody heard him promise. <laughs> Come on, baby. Jeffers, I'm scared. Why, sir? We've been rehearsing a week, and the show's no good. Well, the first week of rehearsal's always depressing, sir. Hello? Yes? Miss Williams, sir. I'm not in. Miss Sherry Williams, sir. Oh. Little poison ivy. Hello? Hello, Mr. Hale. I called to thank you for your roses. They're beautiful. Yes, I'm practically well now, thanks. The spots are fading out. Oh, didn't you know? I had a case of delayed measles. <laughs> no, Joe didn't catch them. What a pity. What's that? We're going away today, Joe and I. Mm-hmm. On a long vacation. You know, of course, Joe quit burlesque. Oh, yes, she's had a couple of offers for musical shows. Broadway productions, but... Oh, by the way, how's your new show coming along with that wonderful music? I'm afraid the music sounds very tired. For a week, I've been living on hot six specials. That's too bad. Well, anyway, I just had to call and thank you for the flowers before we leave town today and to wish you good luck with your show. Goodbye. Oh, that was Mateo. Well, what did he want? Oh, nothing in particular. Oh. Uh, but he asked about you. About me? He wondered if you'd caught the measles from me. <laughs> He's probably very disappointed when you told him I hadn't. It's too bad you and Mr. Hale don't like each other. Oh, it isn't that I don't like him. I just can't forgive myself for saying those terrible things to him. And I haven't been able to think of a way to make it right. He's awfully worried about his new show. He's afraid the music's too old-fashioned. Well, he's right about that. I don't believe that audiences today want that old-fashioned tempo of 1894 with their pompous prima donnas, with their high, thrilling voices. Start at the beginning. I'll show you what I mean. Imagine paying five fifty for three hours of that. It's awfully funny. Well, that's exactly what I mean. Of course, it's only my personal opinion, but if I were producing a show, I think it would go more like this. Move over. <laughs> Tell me what all you want packed so you can catch that train. All right, I'll come show you. Now, you see, that's what I think they want. But, of course, I'm not the producer. <laughs> what is it you want? My home recording machine? And a blank record? But when do you want them? Right away. Okie doke, I'll be over in ten minutes. It's a wonderful idea, Joe and Mr. Hale's show. 
But why don't you just call him up and explain it to him? It's something you can't explain. He's actually got to hear how Joe does it. I'm dumb, I guess. But why do we have to trick Joe into recording it? Because Joe would starve to death before she let Mr. Hale think she was asking a favor. Oh. Hope you have a wonderful vacation and everything turns out just super. Thanks, dear. Sherry, the men will be here in a few minutes for the truck. Is yours ready? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I was just telling Molly how you swung Mr. Strauss around a little while ago. It sounds sharp. Just imagine. Taking Strauss out of the grave and putting him in the groove. I'd love to hear you do it. Oh, I was just noodling around. Oh, come on, Joe. Do it for Molly. She's never heard you sing. There isn't time. Oh, please, Joe. I've never seen you on the stage, and it would give me something to tell my children. Well, all right, but just once over lightly. What did I do? Oh, you remember. A couple of trunks from Grand Central Station? Yes, sir, right in the bedroom. Come in. Oh, forget it, chicken. I haven't been invited, and I won't be. Excuse me, Miss Joe. The man's here for the trunk. Oh, I better go see him. Is everything all packed, Hannah? Yes, sir. I packed everything but that print dress, and I didn't know whether you wanted it or not. Do you think I need it? Well, maybe you better take it along. Are you sure you got it all? Oh, sure. What do we Rover girls do next? I'm going to take this to Mr. Hale's apartment, and I won't leave until he listens to it. Jerry! Yes, Hannah? Jerry, where are you all going? The camp will be here right soon. Uh, I'm going to do something for Joe. For Joe? I've, I've got to get some toothpaste. Oh, yes, toothpaste. Uh, goodbye, Hannah. Wish me luck. You need luck to get toothpaste? I'll be right back. Goodbye, Hannah. Thanks to Megan, Molly, and I'll let you know how it comes out. Here's hoping. Here's hoping. Excuse me. Did you enjoy your lunch, sir? Terrible. Simply awful. Oh, I am sorry, sir. I'm afraid I'm not much of a cook. It's not the food, Jeffers. It's just that I'm not getting anywhere. For two cents, I'd take the whole miserable show. I don't want to see anyone, Jeffers. I understand. You again? Yes. I must see Mr. Hale. It's a matter of life and death. Do you come back here? You can't go in there. Mr. Hale. Oh. Yes, I tried to stop her, sir, but she's rather elusive. Mr. Hill, I've just got to talk Will to you. Will you go away? I'm a very tired man. I've been up all night with a sick That's player. That's your troubles are over. Will you hear? My troubles have just begun. Show her out. Yes, but did you say show or throw? I'm going to stay right here and save your show in spite of you. And if you try to throw me out, I'll scream. Nice and loud, too. Telephone Miss Williams and tell her to come over here and take this little genius away immediately. Uh. Mr. Hill, you can't do that. It would spoil Will everything. Will you stop waving that thing in my face? Oh, I'm sorry, but don't you understand? This is our only chance. Joe and I are supposed to leave in a few minutes on our vacation. Good. Any vacation for you is a vacation for me. Jeffers, hurry. Well, didn't she say where she was going? Yes, and she said she was going to the drugstore. Hello? Yes. What? Again? Yes, certainly. I'll be right over in Mr. Hale's apartment. This is getting monotonous. Yes, especially for Mr. Hale. Hannah, take the bags to the station. We'll meet you there. Yes, sir. If you men would only listen to us women, you'd get ahead a lot faster. Where is that sister of yours? Oh, and I mean you too. Mr. Hale, why won't you listen to me? Be reasonable for your own good. Why are you so stubborn? All right, I give up. What am I supposed to do? Nothing. Just listen to the fact. Unbreakable. Our unlucky day. Oh, that's enough. See what I mean? You'd be perfect for Mr. Hale's 
show. Oh, forget it, chicken. I haven't been invited, and I won't be. Well, how do you know? Well, even if he liked me, Mr. Hale would swoon at the thought of putting a girl from burlesque into one of his ultra-refined shows. Oh, no, he hasn't got that kind of nerve, 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 nerve. How do you like that? This Bubbles Barton in our productions are absolutely unthinkable. Why don't you like her, Mr. Hale? Because she's smarter than I am. I don't like women who are smarter than I am. What's keeping Miss Williams? I have no idea, sir. I got here as quickly as I could. The door was open. Hello. Please forgive us, but we're in an awful hurry. We have a train to catch. Come on, chicken. You're not catching any train. Good ideas don't come often. But little Poison Ivy here just forced me to listen to one. You might be the answer to my dilemma. I want to talk to you about my ultra-refined show. Joe! Yes? Don't accept your first offer. <laughs>
Thank you. 